Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our final webinar in our 2015 webinar series, Back to Basics. Every day, there is more and more clutter out in the world, uh, and it's getting easier and easier to get distracted and lose focus. So we're continuing our Back to Basics conversation today, and I'm focusing on SEO, or better known, search engine optimization. Um, and this is an interactive presentation, so we wanna hear your questions. Um, so please post comments on either the hashtag, um, or the Hangout, um, or on YouTube, and you can also tweet us using the hashtag RPSBack the number two basics. Um, so for those of you who don't know who Rock, Paper, Scissors is, I am Amanda Sutt and I'm creative director here at Rock, Paper, Scissors. Uh, and we've been doing this for about three decades. Uh, and we've seen a lot of change um, with ourselves and with the industry and just trying to keep up with things. So we focus on branding and web development and um, been following these trends over the last couple decades. And what we do is we focus on our clients' brands, not just logos and marketing collateral, but the entire experience, which in today's world uh, includes the digital experience. Uh, and this can be anything from your website to social media to email marketing to your SEO uh, to get people there and more. Um, and for today's presentation, I am privileged to have a guest presenter with me, Jenny Munn. Uh, and in 2009, Jenny started a freelance copywriting business, uh, and in the process of her growing her business, started to do SEO to get to get her where she wanted to be. Uh, and in the process, found a niche and a passion that you will hear as she talks today. Uh, she has spent the last six years helping businesses achieve the same results that she has. So, with that, Jenny, I want to turn this over to you. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for having me and hello, everybody. It's so nice to be here. Um, yeah, as Amanda mentioned, I am an SEO consultant based here in Atlanta, and I really am very passionate about SEO, which is a weird thing because um, when people think of SEO, I'm afraid that they think of, you know, like the, the spammy car salesman. And I real, rarely uh, introduce myself to new people as an SEO person because it has such a bad connotation. But I really am very passionate about this field and about the results it can bring to businesses and to um, for websites. So I have a lot to share with you guys. And yeah, as Amanda said, we want to make sure this is very interactive and leave time for all of your questions at the very end. Um, and in our short time together, I really do want to help demystify SEO and bring it to a more concrete level. And we'll do that. You see the agenda on the screen for our SEO 101 today. I do want to cover an overview to make sure that first and foremost, I get us on the same page with what is the real definition of SEO and how to think about it. Uh, also, five basics for SEO success. So it goes into SEO today, but I have five main things I want to cover with you. And then I'll give you a recap of all that and some resources for moving forward. So with that, let's go ahead and jump in. So as I mentioned, um, covering the SEO 101 overview. So SEO, and Amanda and I were talking about this, it's a very elusive concept. You know, when people come to me, they're always like, okay, explain to me all about this magic that you do. Um, and that makes me laugh. Uh, and I totally understand that. In the past, SEO used to be very black magic, but today it's nothing like that. There's nothing black magic about SEO. It's really just putting in some smart strategy and elbow grease by means of execution, which is so huge, doing the activities that result in SEO. So my favorite definition of SEO, search engine optimization, is the practice of making your content findable. It's tactics, techniques, strategies to make sure that your content, and by content I mean it could be your homepage, it could be a services page, a blog post, a press release, an article, anything with its own URL can be landed on and can be findable. And the point of SEO is to optimize not only your homepage, but your internal pages as well, as, and of course your blog post and your other content. So that's really what SEO is, it's making that content findable. And you'll see here a few screenshots. One of them is a screenshot taken from Google Analytics. You'll see there's organic search, direct, referral, social. I like to show this because I really do want to emphasize to people that SEO is just one of the many channels you use when you're trying to drive traffic to your website. So, if, you know, look at it there. It's, it's 
it's just a channel, it's just something you do to bring more traffic and awareness to you. And so there are a lot of things that go into it, but at the end of the day, it is. It's just one of the ways you diversify how you're uh, promoting your business. The other thing I, I often really like to get on the same page with about is that people come to like, oh, well, I'm doing great for SEO. I'm ranked number one for my business name or for my name. And I say, well, that's great. You should be ranked for your business name or your name, but that's not really true SEO because um, that's more brand reputation. Like you probably don't know, if you were looking for SEO help, you might type in, SEO training or SEO services or consultant, you wouldn't necessarily type in my name because you don't know me. When someone types in your name or your business name, that is more brand reputation. And that's wonderful. I want you to have that. But what true SEO is, is when people don't know you exist yet. They just know they're looking for the services or the products or information or solution or the pain points in their mind. And you want to make sure you show up regardless of whether they know who you are or not. So that is really, um, it, it's SEO 101, the very basics of what it is. And people, again, everybody wants to get more traffic to your website, but it's a little bit um, elusive on what that is. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the five basics on how you actually make SEO happen. So the first one is choosing your keywords wisely. Uh, and I'll go into more detail about, that, about what that means, but you know, people say, well, SEO is it's more than just keywords, and that's absolutely true, but it all starts out when someone types something into a search engine. Um, and that is where this whole practice of making yourself findable comes about. So keywords are still super critical in making sure you're choosing and targeting the right ones. The next basic is Google Analytics and Google Search Console. Um, and I call those your BFFs. So these have to be your new best friends forever when, when you embark on your SEO journey. Because people do, they come to me and they say, well, SEO is really hard because I don't know how to make it measurable. And the way you check in on your ROI, you see how things are working, you understand how to tweak your strategy is through Google Analytics and Google Search Console. So we'll talk about those. And of course, what contributes to SEO today? I think this is one of the biggest things that people are confused about is, uh, and there's a lot of misperceptions out there, a lot of sensationalized articles. So I do want to talk about uh, how you get SEO today and what are all the different activities and channels you have to be involved in to make that happen. The next one, number four, understand the true job of SEO. And uh, I will leave that to be a little bit mysterious right now, but I, I, I really want to make sure this is so critical that you understand the job of SEO so you don't make it to be more than what it should be. Um, when Google penalties hit a few years ago, um, a lot of businesses, they got completely wiped out. They had to start from scratch because they put all of their eggs into the Google basket. And so I really want to emphasize the true job of SEO. And your whole business cannot, it should not hang on, on in the fate in the hands of Google. So we're going to talk about SEO and how you should really look at it. Uh, and then number five, making sure that SEO is aligned with your business. So let's go ahead and move on to number one. Um, so keywords choose wisely. Um, I've seen several different things when people approach me and they're looking for help or guidance with SEO. One of them is that they say, okay, here are the keywords I want to rank for, and they hand over, um, you know, hundreds or dozens and dozens of keywords. Um, and some of them are good. Other ones, you know, I can tell right off the bat that they haven't gone the next step of doing their keyword research. Um, one of the very first things, the biggest mistakes I see is that the keywords they've chosen do not have buying intent. And let me tell you a little bit more about that means. It's, it's that they're going after words that are very general or very informational, but it doesn't indicate the person behind the computer would be looking to buy your products or services. So for most of my clients, they want to drive more traffic to their website to result in some kind of a conversion. Of course, many hope to get more leads. They want to get more inquiries. They want to build up their email subscribers. They want people to subscribe to social. They want to be seen as a resource and a thought leader in the industry. There's all some kind of um, conversion you want to happen. But the vast majority of people I see who are just starting with SEO, their keywords don't indicate that someone would be looking to make a purchase or that 
they're looking for solutions or services or products. They're just very general that any Joe Schmo could type in. Or what I say, a college student who's writing a paper would type something in. So I'll explain to you in just a moment more about buying intent and how you can understand the difference. The second mistake, though, I see, and I think this is really critical when you're choosing keywords for your business, especially if you're a small to mid-size business, is that you're choosing keywords that are out of your league. And what I mean by that is you're choosing keywords that are much too competitive that you will never be able to outspeak the websites, the companies, the brands who are on page one or two um, because you just can't you're you just can't compete with them on that certain level. So you're going after keywords that are super competitive and you're frustrated why SEO doesn't work. So you really have to get more niche and more go more long tail with your keywords to really be able to start ranking and seeing some momentum. And then the third factor, when you're choosing keywords and determining what SEO you're going to go after, again, in the beginning, your SEO is your keywords and really understanding what keywords you need to rank your site for to get more traffic is understanding what real keywords are versus fake. And I'll explain that to you in just a moment as well, but I can share with you that uh, and this is hard because with marketing, marketing one-on-one, which I believe keywords, it's just the language of your customers. You have to be very clear and you have to use the same language they're using. What I see a lot of companies do initially is that they're trying to get too clever, too creative. They're targeting keywords that nobody would ever realistically type into Google. Um, it's keywords that you've made up or that are very cutesy or around your brand, but it's not something that anybody besides you or your employees would ever know. So that's what I mean by real versus fake. The real keyword is actual language your customers are used to think to call or what they would call the products and services in your mind. Um, your fake keywords are the words that you came up with that you made up that you're trying to rank for but that nobody is searching on. So let's go ahead and talk about these a little bit more in depth. Um, do your keywords reflect buying intent? This is the first point I brought up about um, buying intent. I see a lot of companies, like I mentioned, they go after like the most general term they can think of. And I can understand why you would do that because you're going after this whole umbrella category of terms. But again, when you're trying to be very specific with your SEO, when you're trying to actually drive qualified traffic and not just what I call you know, traffic tourists, which are just random people who come to your site who would never buy from you. When you want someone to convert and to buy from you, if you sell products or services, information, courses, whatever it is, again, it's going after keywords that show that there's buying intent. So the word on the left is very broad, informational, like health insurance. Um, I was working with a a company in Atlanta that did employee benefits. And he was like, well, I want to go after the words health insurance. But first of all, he is never going to outrank not only the national companies, but like, you know, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Humana, Coventry, Wikipedia. Now um, there's a, uh, the, you know, Dr. Gov, Obamacare ranks. His little employee benefits company was never going to help seat them. So he had to get much more realistic and also not just health insurance, but again, he did employee benefits. So I wanted that now at the end of that is what do people call you? Are they looking for an employee benefits? consulting firm for a company, for a freelancer, for a consultant, we had to get a lot more niche and specific. So it's not just health insurance, it's employee benefits consultants, even Atlanta, because a lot of his clients were looking for someone local who would come down to their company and talk to them. And the next one, water birth. Um, water birth is so general. It could be anybody who is looking, and again, it's probably going to be very hard to outsee for a general term. So if you were providing that kind of um, experience or services, Atlanta birthing coach would be much more indicative that someone would be looking to hire you, again, because they're looking for a person, for a company, for that noun, what I call you. And that's the level you need to think of, is what would someone type in if they want to shortlist a provider who offers the products or services that you have to offer. The same thing with CrossFit. You could Google CrossFit, and more and more, as Google understands exactly where we're located and personalized searches, that one may be okay, but again, CrossFit, maybe the national company, could dominate page one. Or, you know, USA Today comes out with a really big article on CrossFit and the pros and cons of it. If you want your little CrossFit franchise to rank, you need to go after much more specific terms. 
Same thing with weight loss. So uh, I always joke around that the worst keyword you could ever go after is weight loss because it is so competitive. And the companies who are also trying to rank for that thousands of dollars every month at that. So again, if you're a smaller to mid-sized business, you have to go after much more specific terms. Weight loss coach, weight loss and nutrition expert, weight loss and nutrition courses, classes, workshop, whatever it is, you've got to get more specific. Next slide. Oh, back up one, please. Perfect. Um, thank you, Amanda. No problem. Um, so the next point I want to make, and hopefully you understood that, if you have any questions about your keywords, certainly chime in on the Q&A. You can reach out to me later. Google Analytics is now your best friend forever. So a lot of people, they're set up with Google Analytics, but they never take a look because Google Analytics is so, it's very overwhelming. It's often you get paralysis by analysis, and what most people do, they go into the main screen, and they look at the little traffic pattern line, and they say, okay, I guess that looks good. Um, and so they shut it down, and they call it a day. With SEO, I really do think that it is one of the, the channels that you can really measure and see what's working, what's not, what should I keep doing, what should I tweak. Um, and really, Google Analytics really helps you understand the next level of what's going on with your website and how do you take things to the next level. When, you know, the first, the first step is really just, okay, get up your website, put your content on it, make sure it's functioning, make sure you've got a good business model, go forward. When you're ready to get to that next level and do more proactive marketing, you have to have Google Analytics so you can truly understand what's working. And analytics can tell you a lot. It can tell you if people are coming to your website from a mobile device, from a smartphone, from their desktop. It depends if you're B2B or more B2C. But it can help you understand your traffic and where people are coming from with geographic locations. The total visit, the bounce rate, meaning that it's that, that rate is the percentage of people who come to one page and then they immediately hit the back button or close out that tab. They only go to one page on your site and they do not go deeper in. So the amount of people who go to one page and hit the back button and you're always looking to keep people on your site, to keep people clicking through. So I see most businesses have a bounce rate of 40 to 60, maybe 65 percent for B2B companies, and that's not bad. But again, the goal is to keep people clicking through, time on site. Google knows exactly how long people are staying on your site for. Generally, again, it could be anywhere from a minute to two or three minutes. The number of pages visited, you definitely want people to visit more than one page. You hope they go to a few different pages. And analytics can kind of tell you which pages are people bouncing off of, which pages do people stay on for five seconds before leaving, what are your best and your top performing pages. It can tell you so much. Traffic sources, which again is a screenshot here showing that um, for this particular site, they've got a lot of organic traffic which is a combination of those brand reputation keywords. If someone is specifically looking for your company name or an employee's name or an executive name or a business owner's name, that includes both of those in organic search. Direct traffic, meaning someone has typed in your URL directly or they've clicked on a link or through a PDF or something, that's direct traffic. Referral is another website that has sent traffic to yours, and then social media, of course. So analytics will tell you so much, but specifically what I care about are what are the most popular pages of your website, what are your SEO landing pages. So again, most of what I see is that people land on the home page the most, but I've certainly seen blog posts come up as top landing pages. I've seen about pages come up. So you really want to keep a, an eye on and understand what are your top SEO pages, what are people landing on, and making sure that your most important pages are getting landed on as well. And then the other super important um, metric you want to look at in analytics is what I call the queries report. And, and know that when I say query, that's synonymous with keywords. Um, so you might hear me interchangeably say queries or keywords, but they mean the same thing. Um, for these purposes, and then clicks. What keywords have driven clicks back to your site? And I'll explain that more in a minute. Next slide, please. So this screen might be a little bit fuzzy to see, but as Sandra mentioned, I did start out six, seven years ago my freelance career as a website copywriter, and I had opened up my virtual doors, like, okay, world, I'm here, my copywriting business has gotten started, you know, let the business pour in, and that did not happen. 
<laughs> when I truly understood that I'm going to have to go out and make things happen to drive traffic to my site, to get inquiries, to promote myself and let people understand what I'm doing now, I truly knew that I had to, that I knew people were out there searching for copywriters and I, uh, and I really took it upon myself to understand what that meant and how to make it happen. And initially, it was making sure I was using the word literally, not just wishing it was going to happen, but using the word literally Atlanta copywriter on my site. And then I did blog and I guest blog and I did social media. And when I finally got around to looking at my analytics, I saw this beautiful site of all of these different keywords in here. So there's certainly Atlanta copywriter, there's Atlanta copywriters, Atlanta copywriting. Um, content writer Atlanta and that's when I really understood that the power of SEO is not just when you rank for one or two terms but it's when you get greedy and you really want to own any and all terms that have to do with products and services that you provide and also really shows that people when they're looking for the same thing they use different language so someone might use content writer Someone might use copywriter, someone might say freelance copywriter, um, that there are different ways that people say the same thing. And you really want to make sure you go after all of those different ways. And so again, analytics will show you this. It's super important. You go and check it for that. Uh, and this is a screen here. So why I say Google Search Console has to be your best friend, um, know that my acronym, my abbreviation GA is not Georgia, that's Google Analytics integrated with Google Search Console. Now that's a little bit more um, of an intermediate. Google Search Console used to be called Google Webmaster Tools. And most of the time it is for your webmaster will set it up and help you integrate it. But if you want to look at the SEO data within analytics, you do have to integrate in those two, two tools together. Now the beauty of it is they're completely free. It's super simple. Once they're set up, it's done for you and you're going to have all this wonderful data you can look at and make decisions. So if you want to look at the SEO data within Google Analytics, you have to set up Google Webmaster Tools, which is a great idea anyway because it is how Google does talk to you. People always say, well, can you call Google? And you can call Google, but how they will talk to you is through Webmaster Tools to show you how they're looking at your site, how they're measuring it, if they flag you or if they um, are enacting a penalty if they see that a spammer is happening to your site. So it's a good idea to really have both tools set up, Google Analytics number one, number two, Google Search Console, and integrate these together. And for SEO purposes, you get this whole set of data, and it'll show you what keywords Google sees your site is relevant for, your approximate ranking for some of the keywords, and which keywords people have actually clicked on your website and come back to your website. So it's really insightful of the first step to benchmark and understand what is working with your website as far as SEO, no matter what level you're at. Next, please. So this is a little bit more of, um, it's, a, it's a better screenshot so I can truly show you um, what's working with SEO. So this is a screenshot from my analytics. And really what I do with people when I'm first understanding, well, what's working, what's not, what step are you in with SEO, is the very first thing is taking a look at the very first column. You see query and you see terms like SEO for business owners, SEO lead generation, SEO learning. That is, if those are terms that Google uh, showed impressions of my website for when someone Googled that. So my website came up when someone typed in those terms. It doesn't mean that they came to my website with those necessarily. It just means that, that those are the terms that Google sees my website is relevant for. And that is the very first step that you all should do as well when you're understanding is my SEO working, yes or no? Are you seeing the right terms come in? Are you seeing terms to indicate that someone is looking to purchase your products or services or they're looking for service providers? Again, that's the biggest mistake I see is that people didn't necessarily know and they didn't get literal with using the terms um, their keywords, remember, the lead generated keywords that show there's some kind of a commercial intent, they're going after terms like weight loss, or um, CrossFit or, you know, health insurance or health. You know, they're going after these general terms, but they haven't gotten more specific, so they're not 
converting leads or customers because they haven't proactively put those specific lead gen terms on their website. So that is what I see first and foremost. The second thing I see is if you're trying to rank for keywords that are just way too competitive, you might see those queries come in, but you're going to have a big at zero under do you see right here where it says clicks in the third column, you see five all down the row. That means five people clicked on that result and came back to my website. If you see zeros next to those terms, it means that nobody actually saw your website or they just didn't click on it and come over. So your goal, first and foremost, is to make sure that you're having the right queries and the right terms come in for your site and that you're ranking and actually getting clicks and back to your site with those. And again, that's through Google Analytics. Okay, next point, this is number three. What contributes to SEO today? So this is one of my favorite graphics. Totally true that one does not simply get to the top of Google. Maybe in the past, several years ago, you used to be able to do a, two, a few tweaks in the back end and automatically your site would rank. And this really is one of the biggest perceptions with SEO because SEO used to be a very technical discipline. And all you'd have to do was add a few keywords into the back end, maybe a few keywords into the front end, bam, you would rank automatically. Well, because everything has gotten a lot more sophisticated, thank goodness Google has um, enacted a lot of algorithm changes to weed out a lot of spammier practices, which are exhausting to keep up with, having to submit your site to hundreds of directories or build thousands of backlinks or do all these crazy things that people used to have to do to get SEO results. So thank goodness we don't have to do some of the spammier tactics to resort to those. The challenging part is, Google looks at a myriad of different things to understand, is your site legit, is it authoritative, and how should it rank? If there's hundreds of websites that all think they should rank for employee benefits consultants, then how would Google shake out your site? Where would you shake out in the search engine results? So what they look at today, your technical basics. So again, first and foremost, Google is very sophisticated, but they are search engine. There's spider bots that come in and crawl the back end of your site. You have to make sure that your code is clean, that your website loads fast, that your pages link to each other, that there's nothing blocking your website. Um, and again, no matter what you did to your website with SEO, if you don't have those technical basics taken care of, then you'll never get a rank. And I don't think that to scare you. Most websites are fine technically, especially if you've just gone through a redesign or you have a new WordPress website. Out of the box, you're probably fine. But if you had a site that's several years old and you built out, you know, built up some code and gunk and junk in the background. Um, then you are going to have to probably do some technical tweaks and optimization if your site has gotten really slow because you've uploaded a bunch of images on it or a bunch of really heavy um, files or videos, whatever it is. Again, your site has to be technically optimal, optimal just in order to rank. And so you need to get that checked out. Again, keywords, we've already talked about it. You're not going to get to the results you're looking for if you're going after very general competitive terms. On-page optimization. Once you know your keywords, have you worked them in appropriately? Um, have you done all of your on-page foundational fundamental elements that need to be done? Um, and again, that's internal linking. It's formatting your page. It's using your keyword, the title tag, and meta description, and H1 if you can, and being literal, literal about actually targeting those terms. And a few other things as well that on-page requires. Links and social media signals. So again, Google is, you know, if everybody is trying to target the same term, Google has to look underneath the surface, off page, meaning that they're looking at other links and other websites, quality websites that link to you to give a vote of confidence in their eyes. So it's not necessarily the quantity of links, it's the quality of backlinks and the, relevant, the relevancy of other websites who link to you. Um, and that has changed a lot over the past few years because a lot of people have gotten very manipulative and they've tried to um, scale SEO and they've tried to do this the quick, easy, and cheap way and that just does not work anymore. Not only does it not work, but you could get penalized if you try to do things the cheap way. So you have to do things in a very natural, um, a natural way that you're just leveraging what your business is already out there, your community, looking for opportunities. Of course, social media signals is huge. Because Google Analytics can measure who comes to your site, from what social media channel do they stay there? And again, those boost the confidence from other social media sites. 
authority, engagement? Do people stay on your website? Um, are you out there in the community? Are they clicking through different pages? Are they watching your videos? Are they looking at your images? Are they scrolling down below the fold? Google is measuring all that to make sure that people are finding your content and your website valuable. So speaking of content, this is huge right now, content marketing, content strategy. Again, it's not only making sure you're targeting the right terms in your copy and you have the right content that speaks to when someone is looking to shortlist providers, but your content has to be so high quality. Um, it has to actually be valuable and give people something, and it cannot be duplicate. Um, content is really huge right now with SEO, not only your one-time content, but ongoing as well. And then again, site structure, user experience, do your pages link together, are your, more, are your most important pages close to your home page, um, does your menu have an order that makes sense, all of those things, and again, user experience, are your visitors happy when they come to your website? So I know that sounds a little bit overwhelming, and I often feel like I depress people when I talk about all the things that contribute to this, but really, this is having a good modern business these days and good website marketing best practices. So it really is, you can't rank very quickly anymore because there's a lot that has to come together to make that happen. But if you work on just good marketing best practices, and if I say it in terms of, are you doing everything you can to consistently get in front of your community, your target market, your peeps, if you're doing that on a consistent basis, and, um, and doing good website marketing best practices with a few SEO things in mind, then you are well on your way. But again, SEO is a very long-term channel because of all of this. So as I mentioned, the true job of SEO, a lot of people think, okay, well, I just need to rank and that'll make my business, you know, it'll boost it automatically and I'll be set and I'll have all this new prospects and leads just pouring into my website and reaching out to me every day. And that's really not true anymore. It's only a half truth is that the true job of SEO is to drive quality traffic to your website, but when people land on your website, your website marketing plan has to take over. So SEO is not going to make someone automatically trust you and reach out to you automatically. You have to have great copy that's designed to convert. You have to have a, um, a modern looking website design. You have to have a funnel. Like I mentioned here, once traffic lands on your site, your plan takes over. That has to do with the professional looking design, social proof, messaging, persuasive copy, and a post-click plan. Just like the strawberry there, some will be ready to reach out. Other ones, other, um, other people, prospects, traffic has to be nurtured. And this is just a quick case study. Um, I know I have just a few more minutes here and then I want to turn to Q&A. A quick case study of a client that came to me. This is a workshop I did a few months ago in the spring. Is that this client, David, I was asking him, well, how did you find me? And he said, well, I Googled SEO consultant and then I got to your website and I looked at your services and then I went to your about page and then I read some of your blog posts and then I watched a video from you at WordCamp Atlanta earlier this year and then I went to your social media account and then I decided to reach out. And I thought that that was so funny but so indicative that just because someone comes to your website, they are not going to trust you automatically. And again, that's where your content marketing plan has to come in and your content strategy. And you have to have other elements in place to make sure that people will know, like, and trust you and reach out to you to go that extra step. SEO does not automatically mean you're going to get leads. You have to get people to trust you and convert them and move them along the funnel. Okay, and our last point here, aligning SEO to the business. So really, before you do all these tactics, you really want to make sure that your SEO strategy, your keywords, your website, your most important pages, they all reflect who do you want to attract, who is the person most likely to do the searching, to hire you, what is in their world. Again, what is the language they're using? What are their specific pain points? Do they know you exist? You know, are there a lot of competitors who do exactly what you do, or are you a very progressive, new type of business out there, and they don't even know what to call you? So do you have to go out there other terms? What is the pain point in their mind why they would even need you? Do you understand their day in and day out? And that's a lot of customer um, research and target market personas and understanding that before the SEO comes. And then what services and product information do you want to prioritize and promote? I'm always asking my clients, okay, well, which 
service, you know, do you guys focus on? Is it, is it, you know, if you have five services, is it 2020, 2020, or is, is one a lot emphasized more over the others? And we should focus 70% of our time on this one service. And what are all the terms we should go after? Um, so you really have to understand, you know, prioritization. What are the products and services you really want to promote? How do you niche it down? And how do you really get very specific? And then wrapping this up here, two things it takes to learn SEO is I really say it's like tennis. You could love tennis, you could watch Wimbledon, um, but unless you get out on the court with the racket in hand, you are never going to get better. You don't get better at tennis by watching it or studying it or reading about it. You actually have to get on the court. The same thing with SEO. But I tell clients, listen, half of this is not going to make sense until you actually get into your page, you go to the Yoast plugin, and you try to write a title tag, and, and it kind of all comes together. And then you look at analytics, you know the keyword you're going after, are you seeing that keyword as an impression on there? If yes, great. If no, maybe it's competitive. What's the variation of that keyword? You have to actually start doing the activity for it to make sense. And then building your muscle. SEO is not easy. You know, it takes a while for all of this stuff to sink in. You have to hear it 10 times. You have to hear me say the word title tag and meta description um, different, in different contexts until you really start mastering some of these fundamental basics. So if this is overwhelming, um, you're not alone because you just have to expose yourself to some of these terms um, different times. And if you do need extra help with the keyword research, Google has a great keyword research tool. Unfortunately, it is not very intuitive. Um, I've got some screenshots to walk you through. How do you find your keywords? How do you look at the data behind what is more popular? How many people are searching on this? Is it competitive? I've got a keyword report. And also one for marketers, just on SEO essentials and what you need to know for modern SEO and driving leads today. So you can go to my website, jennymunn.com, if you're looking for um, some free resources on how to get started. So to recap our five basics of SEO success, number one, choose your keywords wisely. Number two, embrace Google Analytics and Google Search Console. Number three, understand what contributes to SEO to that it's not the quick channel that it used to be. Number four, understand the true job of SEO, which is to drive qualified traffic to your website. And number five, make sure that your strategy is aligned with your business objectives. And with that, I will wrap it up and turn us back over to Amanda for Q&A. Yes. Thank you, Jenny, so much for coming out and being a part of this today. We just had some couple questions come in that we have. We just want to go back and forth. And guys, feel free to post anything to the Hangout, tweet it to us. Um, or to the YouTube channel as we're going through this last little bit. And even afterwards, we'll push these back out to Jenny and we can uh, more than happy to continue this conversation afterwards. Um, so first up, uh, question is, can I do SEO in a few months? Yes, okay, so can I do SEO just for a few months? That's a great question. Um, the thing with SEO is yes, you could do your one-time SEO and hope that you know your, your SEO will be in place, Google will understand the terms coming into your site. But if you don't do ongoing work, if you don't participate in social media, you're not out there attending industry events, you're not meeting people, you're not blogging, you're not adding quality content to your website. It's not that your SEO will go away, it's probably that the people competing for you for those same terms, they are doing some of that ongoing marketing. So you could try just doing some ongoing, I'm sorry, one-time SEO, but without some of those ongoing initiatives that contribute to SEO, um, you might rank, but then people might outrank you because they're doing more than you are. Does that make sense? Yes. So kind of a follow-up question that we got to this is how long How long will it take for you to actually start seeing some results with SEO? And what do those results look yeah. like? Ooh, so yeah, so that's a great question. It really depends, you know, first of all, what stage are you at? You have a brand new website, a brand new business, and it is going to take you a while to start getting momentum. Um, to start competing against other websites that have all of this historical data and authority built up. And really understanding the competition of your industry as well is 
really important. The more competitive it is, the longer it's going to take. So I can just tell you my time frame with clients is that it takes us a few weeks by the time we understand, okay, where is the site? Where do we want to be? What are the keywords you want? Doing the keyword research, understanding what are the pages we need to refresh and re-optimize. Do we need to clean out any code? Is your website as fast as it could be? Doing all the initial things could take a few weeks. And then it just depends on how quickly can you execute and, and optimize your website pages, a handful, I always say five to 10 pages or posts, get them uploaded to your website and then give it a week or two for Google to come in and crawl. So because it's not just throwing up keywords in the back end and you can rank within a week, um, it depends on, you know, do you have an uphill battle? Are you completely new? Are you a very established business? And it's just going to take a few purposeful things to get you to rank quicker. Um, but generally, it's, it's several months out. So you have to be in SEO for the long haul, and you just have to make it part. You have to bake it into your existing marketing initiative. So it could take um, two months, but more so, I see three to six plus months because everything is just more competitive out there than it used to be. So I say three to six plus Sure. Okay. And you mentioned a term in here when you're talking just now was crawl. And I want to jump over to a question is what is the difference between indexing and crawling? Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's a great question. Very technical. Uh, we're well, not very technical. It's just understanding the technicalities behind SEO and why SEO has scared people so much in the past. And they've kind of shied away from it. And they do think it's a lot of black magic is um, crawling is, is Google bot. It's the crawlers. Um, the search engine spider is crawling the back end of your website page. Is your website even able to be crawled or do you have a whole lot of flash and JavaScript and a lot of code that doesn't make sense and Google can't even crawl to understand what your page is about? So can your page even be crawled or is it set up to be blocked? So crawling a page is super important. After your website can be crawled, then it has to be indexed meaning Google retains your page and puts it into their big storage system. And it's kind of like the index in the back of a book, how they sort your page and understand how to classify it. So first, your website has to be crawled in the back end, so Googlebot sees it, and then it's indexed in their servers, whether that's on page one or page 500 of Google, it's in Google's index. And then the third part of that is ranking. How do you move your page up so that it's ranked higher, so that there's a higher chance you'll get more visibility, more eyeballs, more clicks? So crawling comes first, and then indexing, and then ranking. Sure, that's great. And you answered this in the presentation, but I think it's worth repeating. Um, and the question is, can you, you, can you get, um, get a rank for a super gen general term, something like ski? Mm, that's a, um, a good question, and I would say that that is absolutely probably nearly impossible unless you're Wikipedia <laughs> yeah. or USA Today. And again, you know, a term like ski, um, you really want to niche it down several levels. So are you a ski resort? Do you sell ski boots? Do you sell chopsticks? Do you sell mm -hmm. tourist information? Are you a world traveler? Um, so that term, probably if you even tried to rank for that, you would have a whole lot of bounces because people it wouldn't match their intent. But again, something that would be super impossible to rank for these days because of the websites who are on page one, two, three, mm -hmm. and so on. Definitely. Okay. Uh, up next is what are meta descriptions and do they still matter? Oh, yes. So meta descriptions, if you Google a keyword and Google comes up and you see it used to be um, the 10 blue links, but now there's maybe the local results or images and some of the organic results and the paid results on the side. Meta description is the little snippet below a search engine result. Um, it's usually one to two sentences and it describes what that page is about. Now, it absolutely matters because what you put, it almost is like a little ad. What is that page about that you're optimizing? And you have to have a keyword in it because that keyword in your meta description is bolded in a well-written, engaging meta description that describes what that page is about in a very succinct, concise matter will help you increase your click-throughs of that keyword to your website versus the competitor who's above you and below you. So meta description, Google doesn't use that for a ranking factor, but it's absolutely a click-through factor um, because people, again, if they don't know you yet, if they type in a general keyword and they don't even know who you are, it helps people understand very quickly what is your site about and why should they come to your website over one of the other uh, results on the page. So super important, very important. 
Excellent. And a good follow up to that is um, about alt tags um, on images. As is that still an important uh, practice? Yes. You know, all all text on the image it, it is important, um, especially more so if people would find you through Google Images. So it's one of the ways that Google ranks images. If you ever go to Google Image Search, I do that a lot. I'm looking for images. Mm -hmm. I shop that way. Actually, there's a lot of data that shows now that's how people shop. Instead of putting in a product term and going to the universal search results, they'll go right to images and they'll look at all. Like, that's how I buy birthday cakes or I look at ideas for inspiration for home decor, I go right to the images. And that's how Google decides what images to rank is you have the file name and the alt text. Also, if you have a keyword in your alt text as part of your on-page optimization, it's one of the places Google Spiderbot is going through and calling your page and understanding what is your page about. It will definitely look at the image file name and it will look at the alt text. And so that's you know more bonus points you get to help reinforce to Google this is what your page is about and you deserve to rank well for it. Okay. Um, and then this is kind of our final set is what is the difference between internal and inbound links? Oh yes, great question. Huge distinction, um, but similar terms. So internal links are you when you're linking your own website pages to each other. And it's a huge SEO foundational element and best practice. Um, and even a best practice for website marketing and conversion in that you absolutely want to have calls to action. You want to tell people what to go to next. You want to tell people, check out my about page, look at more of my FAQs page, check out this blog post, look at these other services, check out this portfolio page. Internal links not only help your users understand where to go and what are your most important pages, but it helps Googlebot and the spider do the same thing. If you're pointing you know, links to core pages, it reinforces to Google and it sends signals that these are really critical, important pages. So make sure that you rank them higher, that these are more important. And you always want to link your blog post to your core pages when it makes sense. So you definitely want to link your content together, again, not only for Google, but to make sure that your visitors go to your different pages and stay on your site longer. So they're internal links. Inbound links are links from other websites that come into your site. Again, it could be, it could be from Twitter. It could be you publish something on LinkedIn and you're having people come back. It could be a referral partner, or it could be you spoke at a conference somewhere in your bio, you had a backlink to your website. So it's, again, another website versus so that's inbound, and then internal are your links within your website. Fantastic. And I had one person just sneak one question in right at the end here. Um, and to talk, mm -hmm. just explain a little bit about negative keywords. Oh, negative keywords. Oh, gosh, that's a great question. Negative keywords have to do more with pay-per-click um, than okay. they do with organic SEO. And, and, and the people have told me, well, Jenny, I do definitely do not want to rank for this keyword. Like I had a commercial, a B2B business who did um, – Oh, they did concrete repair, and they, they did a lot of industrial um, repair work, and they said, we do not want homeowners calling us who need their, their uh, driveway fixed. Sure. So how do we do a negative keyword for homeowners? And I said, well, just make sure you don't use that term on your website. Or if, you, if people do come to you with that, then you have to make sure that they will self-identify, and the ones who are not a good fit will leave, and the ones who are will stay. I had a lawyer, for example, or I'm sorry, I had a dating coach, and she was like, well, I only want to work with lawyers or financial women or women who have a lot of money to hire me, so how do I make sure it's only lawyers who Google these keywords? And I say, well, you can never control who's behind the computer type of the keywords, but based on the intent of the term, you can make sure you're choosing keywords that reflect the buyer persona you want. You don't want to go after words with cheap or free or affordable or things like that. So the keyword is very important. And again, your copy on your website is super important. Make sure that your market will self-identify and the ones who aren't a good fit will just leave. So really no such thing as negative keywords with organic. Fantastic. Jenny, thank you so much for helping us out today and being a part of this. Um, and anybody, please feel free to post comments on either YouTube or the Hangout. Um, we'll get back at you with that. Um, and we'll stay tuned for next year's set of presentations. Uh, and we look forward to meeting with you then. Thanks, guys.